So today we're talking about how to master the art of self-discipline. It's Paul Toby from Training Business Pros. I want to thank you for joining me. Self-discipline is one of those things that once you have it, and you may have been born with it, but most people not so much, but you can manufacture it. And once you have it, then that becomes a great tool when you want to create anything that you want to do, be, or have in your life. And today we're going to talk about a real powerful definition of self-discipline. And then I'm going to give you six things that are really going to help you manufacture it in your life. And we'll get to that right after this. So we're talking about self-discipline and if you have it already, then that's great. Most people do not. But let's start off with taking a look at the definition of self-discipline because I think this is extremely helpful. So self-discipline is the ability to focus on what you really want versus what you want right now. So what you really want, I think most people are not able to answer that question. In fact, I think the number one why number one reason why most people don't get what they want is because they don't know what it is they want. But if you do, you probably know that that's a little bit off into the future. It's like it must be big because nothing ever big got created with a small idea. So if you're going after some something big, then you know that you must have a certain amount of self-discipline in order to accomplish the things that you need to accomplish in order to achieve that big goal. On the other hand, that's what we intend to do, but then there's all these competing intentions. For example, we want to get in shape, lose weight. Uh, that's our intention. But then there's competing intentions that said, well, I also want to watch television and eat pizza. I intend to create more revenue in my business this year. Uh, but I also intend to play a lot of golf, although that might not be such a bad thing, but you also know that if you're playing more golf, it's probably not going to help you in your business unless your business is golf. <laughs> so again, the definition is really powerful. Here's, here's what we're going to focus on and, and our ability to focus on that creates self-discipline. And if we do that, then we can generally accomplish a lot more in our life than most people. And now let's talk about six things that you can use and leverage to manufacture a little bit more self-discipline in your life. So these are things that you can actually do that create self-discipline. Number one, what is your intrinsic motivation? Intrinsic meaning motivation that comes from within, not from without. So whatever you wanna do, whatever you wanna be, or whatever, whatever you want to have in your life that you don't have right now is in and of itself motivation. That's what creates enthusiasm. It's like two things. It's like we've got this goal and we know that we're going to enjoy that journey. So enjoyment plus big goal equals enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a form of motivation. It's like it's a reason to get out of bed. It's a reason to move forward and do the things that you need to do in order to accomplish that big goal. So knowing what it is you want is very important to the equation. Number two, absolutely you must live by the calendar. So once you know what it is you want, I'm pretty sure you have enough common sense that you're going to have to schedule in some activities that are different than what you're doing now in order to accomplish that big goal. Let's take an example. Let's say I wanted to get to Carnegie Hall because that's what my piano teacher told me at the age of eight was a, a good idea. And I said, well, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And he said, practice, practice, practice. So I basically did for about 35 years before I ever got to Carnegie Hall. And it wasn't just because I could play the piano that I got to Carnegie Hall. It was also because of relationships and contacts and just the universe conspiring to get me that win. But I think you also recognize that you have to schedule in that practice time. 
In fact, I think most people think that scheduling is just for business or just for professional career activities. I schedule in my workouts. I schedule in my golf. I schedule in family outings and, and everything. It's like I live by the calendar because if you don't schedule things and you don't live by the calendar, competing intentions will win out. And that's a big challenge with accomplishing goals if all of these competing intentions and distractions are winning out. Okay, so number three, what you focus on expands. So the, the concept of focus means applying your energy and enthusiasm and focus to what it is you need to do. There are have to's on the way to your want to's. So we want to get to Carnegie Hall. We know we have to practice. We know we have to schedule those activities. But as you schedule them and as you continue to focus on the activities on the way to the big goal, the universe steps in with something called universal law that says, yes, what you focus on expands, but also the, in that is the law of attraction. So your focus creates an energy and a frequency of enthusiasm, which then attracts more than the sum of its own parts. It attracts more opportunity, more people, more situations, more circumstances. I, I like just, even if it were just opportunity, that would be enough. It's like, we're gonna do this thing, we're on our way to this goal, where are all the opportunities? And of course, you have to be awake enough to see them. They're typically always there. But as you focus, more opportunities expand into your life to allow you to accomplish whatever, whatever it is you want to accomplish in the time period that you want to accomplish it or even faster. Number four, persistence is its own reward. If you're familiar with the movie, The Founder, which is the story of Ray Kroc, uh, the founder of McDonald's. In that movie, before he founds his first McDonald's, he's basically going around the country with blenders in his trunk, selling these blenders to um, food outlets and restaurants. But he also has a record player with him on the road and he has vinyl records that he spins and those records are motivational self-help records. And the common theme that was weaved on those recordings that he remembered was the concept of persistence. Persistence means going after it and absolutely never giving up, scheduling your activities and just going for it, but, but not stopping, not being stopped by competing intentions or even other people. But it's its own reward because as you persist, the behavior of persistence multiplies. So as you give persistence, you get back the more behavior of persistence, more behavior of focus and energy and enthusiasm. So that's why it's its own reward. All right, number five, how do you measure your success? So it's tough to, to absolutely measure everything, but in most cases, if your goal is measurable, let's say I wanna to get to Carnegie Hall, that's a measurable goal. How far did I get? If I didn't get to Carnegie Hall, how far did I get? Did I play other? venues, big jazz festivals, whatever. Yes, we got far. Maybe we didn't get to Carnegie Hall, although I did. Um, but you have to understand that between here and that big goal, whatever you want to do, be, or have, there must be other things that are measurable. So in business, obviously, revenue is a measuring stick, but also numbers of clients, numbers of employees, uh, amounts of products that you create, those are all wins that must uh, that you must do, but it also must be measurable, if that makes sense, okay? So number five is whatever you're going after, make sure that there's something to measure on the way. What are the key performance indicators of our success? And then finally, number six is whatever those successes are that you were able to measure, whatever those key performance indicators are, you have to celebrate them because celebration is your reward for consistently focusing, persisting, scheduling your activities and doing what it takes in order to achieve 
that big goal. And celebration could be as small as a high five or a hug. It could be sending something in the mail to somebody that helped you, or it could be any form of generosity, or you just could schedule a weekend away. I'm not specifically talking about jetting to Paris for an evening <laughs> dinner, uh, because maybe that's out of your reach, but whatever it is, you must celebrate because that's what creates more intrinsic motivation. So those are my six things on how to create self-discipline. Remember, self-discipline is the ability to focus on what you really want versus what you want right now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would really help. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're often uh, you know, focused on creating more videos and more content. We're, we're pretty much doing one every day. So there's lots of content to come. And if you subscribe, we'll notify you of all upcoming content. And if you have any questions about today's material or you have suggestions about other videos as a spin-off to this one or just other videos about business or life or whatever it is, write them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much for your time. Get out there, be a little self-disciplined.